up, gentlemen? Welcome back to Man Talk, where we create strong, proud, and kind men. You know, growing up without a dad, I turned to a lot of fictional characters to find solace and to find out who I wanted to be and what kind of person that I wanted to represent myself as in the world. And perhaps none of these was more important than my man Goku. While straying from the hero's journey archetype of a lot of fictional male characters, he definitely did display his own sense of morals, his own sense of justice, and his own values. And today we're going to figure out how a fictional character like Goku can teach us one of the most important qualities that a man must master within himself. And that is how to let go of resentment and how to use the way our enemies hurt us to grow even stronger than we were before. We're also going to contrast that with his greatest rival, Vegeta who constantly, constantly let his resentment of Goku and his enemies hold him back forever. Let's get into it. If there was ever a pure of heart character, it was definitely Goku. Unflappable, unwavering in his morals, in his own sense of justice. Always striving to be the best that he could be, no matter what. As a kid, watching this on TV was so cool. It was something else was like, no matter what happens to this guy, he always powers through. No matter what gets in his way, he always finds a way to overcome, or he always helps others overcome those challenges when he is not around to do it himself. And one of the most important qualities that he displayed was his lack of resentment. Goku never resented anyone, no matter who it was. He was always able to let go of the damage that others do to him and his friends and use that for him to grow stronger than the people who did damage to him. They never held him back, no matter what they did to he and his friends. And by contrast, his rival Vegeta is always one step behind Goku, maybe sometimes even more than one step. Fights with malice and hate and vengeance in his heart, and he's always resentful of Goku for powering over him, for overcoming him in their first meeting, even though Vegeta is supposed to be this all-powerful man who comes from royalty, who shouldn't be able to be beaten. He is, in his own words, a super elite, while Goku is just a low-level Saiyan, a low-level commoner. How could he be beat by a low-level commoner? And even in their first meeting, Vegeta is originally stronger than Goku. He almost wipes the floor with Goku had it not been for his many friends backing him up and his many allies coming to his aid in his time of need. But what Vegeta fails to see is the way Goku lets go of the damage that Vegeta has caused him. And in their first meeting, even after Vegeta has caused so much damage and Vegeta has hurt and even killed so many of those people that are close to Goku, Goku still chooses not to stoop to his level when he, even he has the opportunity. As Vegeta is crawling away damaged by the spirit bomb, damaged by the fight that he has had with Goku and his friends. He's barely hanging on, he's barely alive, and he's trying to get to his space pot to escape. Krillin jumps up with a sword that he's got from his ally, and he is about to kill Vegeta. He's about to end it there. Vegeta cannot muster enough strength to fight him off. But Goku stops Krillin. Goku does not let Krillin kill Vegeta in that moment, and many would say that Vegeta might have even deserved it. But what is it that keeps Goku from not stooping to Vegeta's level? What is it about him that keeps him from really following through on that? That keeps Krillin, who was nearly ready to do it, nearly ready to chop his head off, from following through on that? See, if Goku were to kill Vegeta out of malice and spite and resentment, he'd be no better than Vegeta. What's more, Goku knows that he can learn from Vegeta, use him to grow stronger as a beacon of something to never become, as a warning of what lies deep within him, of what resentment can truly bring to a man's heart, and how it holds him back. If you've watched Dragon Ball, you know that Goku and Vegeta end up becoming friendly rivals, but Vegeta never surpasses Goku. He's always one step behind Goku, much to the chagrin of many fans. You see, Vegeta's inability to let go of that resentment that he feels for Goku always inevitably keeps him in the shadow of the man he resents. Meanwhile, Goku not only avenges the death of his race, a race both he and Vegeta hail from, but in the process, he achieves the legendary state of power Vegeta has felt he was destined to resurrect from the bowels of the Sand Race's ancient legends, a power that was dormant for thousands of years. The death of Goku's very best friend Krillin at the hands of the same villain that ended his and Vegeta's entire race unlocks this legendary power. This allows him to avenge his race, his best friend, and even his rival Vegeta, who died at the hands of Frieza earlier, all on his own terms. He does not resent Frieza 
for his evil. He pities him for it. And even as he is surrounded by the consequences of all the death and destruction that Frieza has caused, even as he's surrounded by the anger at the death of his friend that Frieza also caused, he gives him a second chance at redemption. Even in that moment, he chooses forgiveness over resentment and gives Frieza a share of his power, a second chance at redemption. He chooses to give him life. He chooses that second chance. Now think about it. If Vegeta was in that situation, what would Vegeta have done? Vegeta would have ended Frieza right there. No question. And that is the main difference between the two. Goku chooses to let go of the emotions in his heart, the urge to resent Frieza and cause him the pain that he has caused countless others. Instead, he gives him an opportunity at redemption. Now, anyone who's watched this arc of Dragon Ball would say, oh, what can't? Frieza immediately turned around and tried to obliterate Goku with that small share of power that Goku left for him. And you're right. Maybe you're saying to yourself, maybe if Goku had that resentful, killer instinct of Vegeta, things wouldn't have turned out the same. Here's the thing. The fact that Vegeta would have indeed ended Frieza's life on the spot right there if he was in Goku's situation is the reason why he never surpasses Goku. Vegeta's ill will and resentful way of life constantly has him on the heels of Goku. It constantly has him rigid and on the defensive, unable to really unlock what's deep within him. And this is perfectly said by their god trainer Whis later on in the series. Do you know why you're Goku's lesser? Please teach me a wise one. You walk through life with a chip on your shoulder and your nerves wound too tight. This tension makes it hard for you to move and fight at your full potential. And so your first lesson is learning to relax. When there's a chance to rest, you must take it, like Goku does. <laughs> Whis is right! I do love me a good nap! Goku's ability to forgive, forget, and move on helps him grow and learn from his enemies as opposed to Vegeta's rigid grudge-holding and defensive nature that keeps him making the same mistakes, always underestimating the next challenge that awaits him, and always losing in the process. The, the way he always underestimates every single challenge that comes up next always leaves him worse for wear. He is never successful because of it. Alright, so this is all a little odd. How can an anime character really be showing us as men the qualities that we need to be displaying as we go out into life and we try to become better versions of ourselves? Listen, gentlemen, resentment is super powerful. It will constantly hold us back from becoming the men that we need to be, from being as happy as we want to be, from achieving the things that we want to achieve. If you find yourself constantly resenting others for what they have done to you, then you're going to find that it's going to be nearly impossible for you to truly be a happy person, for you to move on, to accept things in life, and to really embrace life to the full beauty that it really has. People are always going to hurt you in life. No matter what you do, people are going to hurt you. And what does it do for you to hold on to that pain, to hold on to that resentment, to go through life always remembering what that person did to you, always using that as an excuse to really not be happy? to not achieve, to not move forward in life. What is it doing for you? Instead, learn from that pain. Learn how they hurt you and grow from that pain. Each and every single one of Goku and Vegeta's enemies, much of them shared enemies always hurt them, always hurt their friends, always threatened their family and their home. But unlike Vegeta, Goku always used that pain to help him grow, to push him forward never making the same mistake twice. Most importantly, never holding on to that pain and never ever letting it control him. Vegeta, on the other hand, always held on to that pain and resentment that Goku first instilled in him. He never learned from his mistakes and constantly, constantly underestimated his opponents, always losing in the process and always falling behind Goku, playing second fiddle, not only to Goku, but his own resentment as well. Thanks for tuning in this week, gentlemen. I hope you learned something about how powerful resentment can be and how it can hold us back in life. Don't forget to go down below, sauce me a fat one of these bad boys, smash that subscribe button for your man for more awesome content like this. And of course, always stay strong, stay proud, stay kind, and stay handsome.